So now that I've finally dropped a judgment call after 1600 tier 4 bosses, I think it's finally fit to make a complete void boom guide. Before the video starts, I've just started a new thing on my island called the sub wall. I've created it so that when the wall is full, I'll be on exactly 1000 subscribers. So if you are new and want to be a part of it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe and comment down below your IGN so I can put you on the sub wall. Now, on with the video. Also, there is a 45 million coin giveaway on my Discord right now. So yeah, join the Discord which is in the link down below. All you need to do is like and subscribe and yeah, I hope one of you guys will win. The first thing I want to mention is that the area I'm about to enter is the Void Gloom Sepulchre. It is located to the right side of the end and has a requirement of Combat 25 to enter. This is where I'll be covering most of the information. It is better for you to have it unlocked, but you can still spawn the bosses with the lower level E-Man, it will just take longer. So, as of right now, there are four different Void Gloom bosses you can do. The first one is Void Gloom Seraph 1. It has a health of 300,000, has three hit phases and drops 5 Enderman Slayer XP, and the cost to start that is only 2,000 coins. The second boss has 12 million HP, also has 3 hits phases, and when at 50% HP, it starts to drop a beacon. This gives 25 E-Man XP, and costs 7,500 to start. The third boss, which has 50 million HP, 3 hits phases, the beacons, which spawn at 66% HP, and the new QB fixitations, also known as the floating heads, which start at 33% HP. This gives 100 E-Man XP and costs 20,000 coins to start. And finally, the Void Gloom Seraph 4. 210 million HP, 3 hits phases, beacons, and the heads. This drops 500 Enderman Slayer XP and costs 50,000 coins to start. Starting off with tier 1, the easiest boss. This has only 300,000 HP. This one's quite easy to kill and most players can do it. All you really need is around about Shadow Assassin Armor and a Livid Dagger, probably a Mana Flux and that will literally be all you need. The hits phase is just a couple hits so it's nothing large so you do not need a Reaper Scythe or a Summoning Ring for that and does limited damage and you can easily out heal it. For the tier 2 bosses, the boss scales quite largely from 300,000 HP to 12 million HP. It also doubles the shield's hit phases from 15 to 30, which makes it a lot harder to deal with as he is also doing increased damage. For this tier, I recommend buying a summoning ring or reaper scythe with either tank zombies or barbarians to deal with this phase. Instead of shadow assassin armor, upgrade to necrom with a warden helmet or if you have the level by final destination. A mana flux will also be helpful for mana and life regen, and for healing weapons a florid zombie sword and wand of atonement will do. For the pet, you can have a baby yeti or blue whale, and if you have enough HP, you can go for tiger and enderman for increased damage. For tier 3 bosses, once again, the boss scales quite largely from 12 million HP to 50 million HP. It was 66 million before the E-Man nerf, which has made all 4 bosses easier. For tier 3, the hits phases are now 60 hits, which means that the summoning ring or reaper scythe are essential. Now, in this tier and tier 2, there is a beacon phase which will occur when the boss reaches a certain percentage of health. When the beacon is thrown, you have 5 seconds to stand next to it, otherwise it, was, it is a one-shot kill. For this tier, final destination is 100% needed, otherwise you will not survive. It needs to have 10k plus kills on it to deal with the damage effectively, and at this point, you can be using a giant sword or livid dagger, or if you are E-Man 5, then you can use a Vorpal Katana. Now, if you aren't E-Man 4 yet, just keep doing Tier 2s or buy a few Tier 4 carries to get you there to unlock Final Destination. If mana is an issue for you, then I recommend upgrading to an Overflux, which is quite a pricey upgrade but is well worth it. This tier also has a Heads phase. When the boss is weak, it will start spawning heads around you. If you point your crosshair at the heads, it will despawn them as they build damage over time. Now, the hardest boss. This has 210 million HP and is one of the hardest Slayer bosses in the game. This can be dealt with very easily with an expensive setup, but not very easily for other players. If you have 50,000 kills or more on your final destination, then you should increase your survivability by quite a lot. To do them effectively, you do need an Atom Split Katana and an Overflux, as you will be using mana quickly with the Atom Split ability and healing items like the Wand of Atonement and the Florid Zombie Sword. It has the same phases as Tier 3, but they happen a lot earlier. Also, for extra survivability, it is almost crucial to have an Ender Relic or Artifact depending on Ender Slayer level and budget. 
Now, with this boss, as you become more advanced, you can carry on the melee route with Atom Split, or when you get more money, you can Hype Mage the boss down, which would require Soul Whip with Mana Steel and a Fire Veil Wand. Or you can stick to melee, in which you can upgrade your pet to an E Drug for extra damage against the boss. Now, some people, if you are wealthy, use high tier Crimson Armor, which now, with the new Q Drop update, is a lot easier to get, as Crimson Essence has decreased in price greatly. This has a lot more EHP and can still do massive amounts of damage compared to Final Destination Armor. Thank you for watching my complete Void Bloom guide. If I did miss anything, be sure to let me know down below. I appreciate the growing support and don't forget to subscribe and comment below your name so I can add you to my sub board.